First up is Mark Wooters, uh, architect, urban planner, Brooklyn Heights resident, and head of Mark Wooters Studios. Uh, so we work with communities all over the world. Uh, we've done award-winning master plans in Washington, D.C., up in Canada and Jamaica, Queens. Uh, and some of our work even takes us, we're now helping in Puerto Rico in long-term recovery efforts in Coney Island after Hurricane Sandy with NYCHA. Um, so that's just a brief introduction. But what we really wanted to address was the blue line, which is the scope of the BQE work. Um, and it's a direct response to the six-lane elevated highway that we wanted to take on using DOT's criteria. It's putting six lanes next to people's bedrooms and then demolishing the promenade. Uh, and we thought that that was really the thing that we needed to address in our proposal. You see the red line is the promenade. We noticed there is a green strip of land that is owned by the New York City Park System. The six lane elevated highway requires using New York City parkland in order to build it. And that was one of the assumptions that was made. All alternatives require use of New York City parkland in a temporary format. So we wanted to look at a alternative to the six lane. Uh, this is not a permanent solution. It's how you get to a permanent solution in the long term. It's called the temporary parallel bypass method. It uses in yellow, you'll see below the promenade, a bypass that runs next to the BQE. Uh, and you'll see then there is a second temporary parallel bypass also in yellow uh, between the Brooklyn Bridge and the Columbia Heights Bridge. You'll see that there are these three areas in purple which there are these tight uh, constrained areas. We're using DOT's uh, traditional lane by lane replacement method in these short concentrated areas. There's also a green area that's built on dirt where we think a simpler construction method could work. I wanna take you on a quick, more detailed tour uh, in a three dimensional model that you'll see come on the page. This is just above Brooklyn Bridge Park. And you'll see the triple cantilever coming into view. This long green stripe is one of the sound berms. They're meant for sound attenuation. And you'll see the triple cantilever uh, coming into view. The promenade up at the right, on the left, uh, hundreds of thousands from, of people from all over the world visit the promenade. There are also hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world who visit Brooklyn Bridge Park. But we noticed between the two, there is a sliver of land that is seldom visited. It's a parking lot that very few people go to. And we figured, well, it's next to the BQE. Why not use that as a place to put a temporary highway? It's behind the berms. And here it is under reconstruction. Uh, uh, and we think it might be a, a very appropriate place to use as a construction point, rather than demolishing the promenade that supports our local businesses. So we can fit in on two levels, three lanes of traffic in each direction, which meets DOT's initial requirements of traffic counts. We can put a screen wall, a sound wall on it, so that the park still is protected from sound. And you can see that all of the traffic can be put on the temporary highway, and that allows us to rebuild the triple cantilever as DOT has requested. Here is a more detailed view. You can see the promenade at the top left will remain open. And it will remain open through most of the construction period. You can see that our plan allows construction access to the triple cantilever while the temporary bypass is behind the berms. Uh, we can put some concrete retaining walls behind the berms to make certain they remain stable, but they may be modified. But the important thing also is that Brooklyn Bridge Park, all of the open space in the Brooklyn Bridge Park remains open to the public throughout the construction process. So we get a great promenade and a great Brooklyn Bridge Park throughout the construction process. I want to talk about the construction methodology just a little bit more. And we're gonna flip around and here you can see cars are on the yellow temporary highway. And you can see there's cranes that are demolishing 
or dismantling. DOT has said they want to basically rebuild the wall of the triple cantilever. In their methodology, you can see the arches are going up to build the six-lane elevated highway. And what they have said to do this is they are going to close the lanes on the BQE down to one lane in each direction at night. It will take two years to build the six-lane elevated highway, according to what we have been told. So there are lane closures involved, even in the six-lane. In our methodology, our temporary highway can be built during the daytime, all the traffic can be put on it, and then the cranes can work during the daytime on the existing BQE. We think this will be an easier construction methodology and perhaps could save cost and time. Many people ask how the connections to the temporary bypass will work. Uh, this is the first of these three purple areas, the lane-by-lane -lane replacement, where are these, there are these tight areas in the plan. Uh, the first one is at uh, Jeralaman Street. You can see we tried to keep these to very short segments to, to simplify the construction time. The other one is where the Columbia Heights Bridge is located. Uh, and the pairing off would be sort of near where Clark Street is located or where the old pool was located. And now we're going to move on to uh, the area between the Brooklyn Bridge and Columbia Heights where the dog park is located. There is an existing DOT on-ramp onto the Brooklyn Br uh, BQE and we're proposing that the, pair, the temporary bypass be also located there. It's mostly on DOT land. You only need a very thin sliver of the dog park. The dog park can remain open uh, throughout the construction. In red, <laughs> in red, you'll see this is where the temporary goes. The temporary six lane goes right by the bedrooms of these, of these homes uh, in North Brooklyn Heights, and I'll show you another view of it. So here you can see an aerial. The red is the six lane DOT proposal. The yellow is where we would put the temporary parallel bypass, away from the bedrooms. Uh, another thing that's gotten more recent attention is that the DOT proposal, the span goes over the Brooklyn Bridge. This is their rendering. <laughs> this is a major construction project in and of itself. We are going under the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, there's also a proposal by DOT, this red loop is an exit ramp off of the Brooklyn Bridge that goes directly onto the BQE. Some people like this idea, some people don't. Um, so I'm going to kind of wrap up with a few points. We're going to go back to the plan. When I started this project, we were looking at pedestrian connections, bike connections. And we looked at a lot of areas where we think there's opportunities for improvement. Atlantic Avenue, Duralaman Dural Street, connections uh, at uh, Old Fulton Street, decking over the ditch at Cobble Hill is incredibly important as well. Um, but then what we also noticed is uh, people ask us about timing and phasing. This is an incredibly complicated site of existing conditions. There are a million things that can go wrong. And so you can't reopen a new BQE under this temporary highway until every one of those million things is done. So that six lane highway, the temporary one, can't re be decommissioned until everything is done. And, and that could take longer than six years, as we all know. In our approach, we're using a segmented method in which if there is a problem that's hard to fix on one end, you can actually still open and completely open segments at the other end. So parts of our plan can be reopened at early starts and you can declare early victories and you aren't stuck with this six lane elevated highway for years on end. Uh, so again, this is not the final plan. This is a way to get to the final plan. Um, there's, you're gonna see many other innovative plans. Um, if the RPA proposal that says you can get it down to two lanes in each direction pans out, this becomes even cheaper than we think it'll be. So we think it, it, it opens the doors for some possibilities uh, for, for everybody here. Thank you.
We've heard a lot of wonderful things tonight about great plans. The, all the electeds have our backs, but it's not over. We need to count on your continued engagement. We thank you for what you've done up till now, but uh, let's not be complacent.